click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about an operating system debugging technique known as D-Trace. How to implement the D-Trace in Windows and various other operating system? What are ECBs? How to implement them? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of using D-Trace? D-Trace is a facility that dynamically adds probes to a running system, both user and the kernel. Now, this dequaring language using D-Trace can give us an overwhelming amount about the estimate of kernel, the system state, and other processor attributes. The system call IOCTL along with other functional calls are included in the kernel to perform the functions of the system call. Now here you can see that lines ending with U are performed in user mode while the lines ending with K are performed in the kernel mode. Now debugging the interaction between the user mode and the kernel mode are nearest to impossible because it needs a tool set that understands both the code and instruments the interactions between them. Now these tools to be truly useful, it must be able to debug any area of the system including the area that were not written for debugging in mind. Now, also we have to consider the performance impact on the system. Ideally, it should have no impact when not in use and a proportional impact during the usage of this tool. Now, DTRIS meets all the requirements and it provides a low impact, safe and debugging environment for the Windows and other operating system. Until the DTRIS framework of familiar with Windows Solaris 10 and other operating systems, kernel debugging was shrouded in mystery and were accomplished via any dependence or archaic code and tools. Now the DTRIS framework provides us with the facility of debugging with the ease of these previous facilities. For example, suppose the CPU provides an breakpoint features that halt the execution and allow the debugger to examine the what is the state of the system. It continues the execution until the next termination or breakpoint. This method cannot be used in a multi-user environment without negatively affecting all the users in that system. Profiling, that is periodically sampling the instruction pointer to determine that which code is being executed can only give you a statistical trend but not the actual individual list of which code and interactions was executing. Code can be included in the kernel to emit specific data under specific circumstances. Now that code cannot be included in that part of the kernel specifically which causes the operation to get debugged in that particular part of the kernel. And it also slows down the part of the kernel. In contrast, DTRIS runs on production system that the system performs important and crucial applications. Now DTRIS is very broad and deep too. It can debug any broad area of the system including the user level and the kernel level and in between the user and kernel level. It also delves deep into the code to determine particularly which CPU execution is being done during the procedure. Now we know that it slows down a system a bit but after the execution when it is terminating it resets the programming environment to its pre-debugging state. Now this DTRIS tool provides a framework, a compiler, a provider for the probes which are written in this dequaring language and also the consumer of those probes. The provider create probes and the probes are stored in a hash table data structure which are hashed by the name and indexed according to the unique probe identifier or probe ID. Now this probe ID, a probe identifier includes the indexing of the probes and the consumer to consume the probes. When the probe is enabled, it rewrites a bit of code area to the 
the tress calling versions and the original data is in being stored. Later the original code is replaced and again that is executed. Now to call this dtrace operation and dtrace probe, we need different kinds of probes. Now all probes are different from each other. Suppose a user level probe is different from the kernel level probe and that is too different from a IO for probe. These probes are then generated by a compiler, a generating code which is safe considered by the compiler. That is, they can examine no loops are allowed to execute and only specific type of modification of the kernel can be allowed under specific circumstances. Only specific type of modification of the kernel are allowed for specific circumstances. Now the users only with the DTRS privileges can use these features as it can retrieve the private kernel data and also it can modify the data in some cases. The generated code then runs in the kernel, it also enables the user and also enables the communication between them to take place. Now there are many consumer who wants to access these probes. The provider can create these probes and after a probe fires that the operation being executed are known as when the probe fires it manages data which are then operated by the kernel. Now any operation inside the kernel are known as enable control blocks or ECBs. So there are many ECBs a probe can be executed to perform the different tasks of a process. Now this ECB is going to be performed in different sections of the task that are needed and divided among the processes. Each ECB can contain a predicate that is an if statement that can filter out that ECB or a list of actions can be performed by that ECB. Now this action most commonly include the capturing some bit of data. Suppose a variable's value that can result and accumulate the data among the processes state, its IO operation, memory management, interrupt management and all. Further, codes and probes that are fired from both user level and kernel level can show that how a user level action can be dealt with the kernel level reaction. However, this code has nothing to do with the performance improving and code optimization. Once the probe consumers is terminated, the PCBs are removed. If there are no ECBs that is consumed by the probe, then the probe is removed. But if the both probe and ECB needs to get removed, then we want to remove the deep trace probe by another call. We want to replace it by the original code and the original code and then get put back and then it is executed as previously of a pre-debugging state. DTRIS also takes care to assure that, that it has a minimum and limited CPU time and memory execution. Now there are buffers which holds the DTRIS results which can also monitor that the exceeding and limit on the CPU time and memory. If the CPU time is exhausted then it could then probe the terminated. After termination of the probe, it would check for the ECB that if it is consuming more than exceeding the limit of the memory. If the ECB is getting the less memory, then it can be continued. Other than that, it can also be terminated like the probe was terminated beforehand. Here we are seeing a smart program snippet that can show that how we are enabled to schedule the probe and how it can accumulate the data about a process that has been executed under all the processes which using the user ID suppose 101 and the CPU time they are taking. So this program as you can see will give us the result output of the all processes that is running under user 101 and supporting the CPU time and memory time what they are taking. Because DTRACE is a part of the open source part of open Solaris version of the Solaris 10 then it can be added in various other operating system too. 
like Mac OS X and iOS operating system of Apple has already added Dtrace as it has very fantastic features and capabilities of debugging the operating system very smoothly, efficiently and reliably. Now this debugging can be done in other operating system that are extending thread listing like in Linux, it is extending the thread listing and performing the DTRS tools facilities, but directly not under the DTRS name. That is all for the DTRS and its implementation and advantages. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.